Hello guys, how's it going? I uh, hope you're all doing great. I uh, hope you've been enjoying the project so far and the updates I've been pushing out. Um, apparently the project is completely done. I'm finished. Uh, I don't think I have anything more to do with it, uh, personally. There's a lot of ways you could improve it. You could increase the RAM, you could add more registers, you could add probably an LCD or something. I've seen a lot of ways people have been creative with this. Um, but yeah, that pretty much cuts it for me. I don't think I'll be working on it anymore. Um, I was really enjoying it, but I have other stuff to work on now. But anyway, um, I think you should go first and watch the first two videos to understand how the progress went and how each module works on its own. Uh, because in this video, I won't explain all of them. I will explain the new ones only. Um, and yeah, let's get started. So um, the first module, I'm just going to give a refresher first on the modules and what they are and where they are. So first we have the clock module, which generates a signal which syncs all of this together, right? Uh, we also have the A register, the B register, which are used to store data, which is then used uh, with the ALU, right, to um, output, uh, to add and subtract and stuff. It only adds and subtracts, but you could also make it do more stuff. I've seen people uh, make the ALU shift values, which makes multiplication easier, right? And I've seen uh, people uh, make... Um, uh, add uh, XOR instructions and AND instructions and other logic instructions. So it's pretty cool, but uh, yeah, we were only sticking with adding and subtracting for now. Uh, what else uh, do we have? We have the uh, program counter, which is basically equivalent to uh, EIP or RIP in x86 assembly. 64-bit version is an RIP. Uh, and here, uh, this basically just counts which instruction we're going to execute, right? So we will fetch it from RAM and then the rest of the computer would decode it and execute it and stuff. Uh, we have the flags register, which is basically like the flags register in x86. We have a zero flag. Uh, if the result is zero, we have a carry flag if there's a carry in the output, right? What we also have is the memory register. Uh, the, me the memory module actually is consists of the, memory, uh, the RAM itself uh, the memory data register and the memory address register, uh, which, yeah, their names are self-explanatory, I guess. Um, we also have the instruction register, which uh, does two things. We will explain in a bit. And we have the, uh, the logic or the uh, control logic for the computer, which is basically, which has the CPU microcode, which basically tells it how to execute what, what instructions. We have, and finally, but not least, it's it's actually yeah, it's pretty it's pretty cool. The output module, which basically uh, works with an out command, which uh, outputs whatever is in the A register out here. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Um, basically, let's just take a look at how generally uh, instructions work in, in assembly, uh, and, and or actually with computers, right? So so when you give a computer an instruction, it doesn't guarantee that it will actually happen instantaneously. It takes a couple of cycles to, to, to finish because usually it has to do a couple of different stuff. So for example, if you tell a computer to move something into a variable, it doesn't do it instantly because it can't just go and put it there. It has to uh, move uh, move data on the bus. It maybe has to read something from a memory location. It really depends on the computer architecture. But it takes a couple of cycles. And in our case here, we actually, if I pause the clock for a second, we have this part of the computer right here. This basically is a, is a, is a counter, right? And it counts uh, for each uh, instruction cycle. Um, so, so in our instruction, we have a maximum here of five cycles, uh, and it tells you which cycle uh, of the um, of the instruction we're on. So, for example, uh, and we will step through this in a bit and understand. But for example, if I have to read something from memory and then move it to the A register, right? This could be done through a single command. Um, it would divide this to a couple of uh, in uh, instruction cycles, so we can actually do it efficiently. Uh, and, and actually be able to do it without conflicting so we, uh, I wouldn't load a value elsewhere and or corrupt something in the in the circuit right so um, so so basically that's what this does this part right so basically just this in, in the uh, it, it kind of like calculates or doesn't calculate counts which uh, micro instruction we're in right uh, and we have the reset button here uh, which just basically resets everything to zero so we can start executing at the first part uh, the first address of the computer right um, so basically this what this does is that it counts right so it, it counts and tells us which um, which micro instruction cycle we're on um, and depending on on which cycle we're on uh, this part 
So this is the microcode, right? It, it, it sends different control signals to the rest of the computer. Remember in the previous videos, we had a load A uh, signal. It was a cable, right? It was a wire. It wasn't really a cable. It was just a wire. <laughs> it was a wire for the A register, which had load A on it, or maybe clear A, or the load B, or the sub, uh, the, the sub signal for the ALU, which basically made it subtract. We don't really have these anymore uh, because they're all connected down here to these control uh, signals. Right, so if I take this paper out, give me a second, um, we have these control signals, right? I hope they're visible enough. Um, please focus, please. Yes, there we go. Um, I'm filming this on my phone and it's not really the best, but <laughs> I'm trying. I could turn off the flash probably, yeah, now it's much better. Um, okay, so, so basically we have these signals, uh, and they're, they're named a bit differently from Ben's, uh, not really for a specific reason, I just kind of prefer them to be this way. So we have the halt signal, which basically stops the entire computer, right? So let me, let me just get a pen so I could, uh, pencil, whatever, just to point at these, right? So we have the halt signal, right? And then we have the load memory address signal, the output from memory, the load to memory, uh, output from the instruction register, load to the instruction register, output A, load A, output B, load B, output the sum, which is basically the ALU, so the output of the ALU, um, the sub uh, control, right, um, the, the program counter count, uh, I think uh, this was labeled pro program counter enable uh, in Ben's PC, uh, the load PC, which basically loads a value into the program counter, and this is equivalent to a jump, and I think that's also what Ben called it. Uh, I just decided to be consistent with the naming here, but then I kind of screwed it up here and named this uh, FLD instead of LDF, uh, which is basically load the flags register. <laughs> anyway, uh, we also have the load output register, which is uh, this module right here, um, and we also have the the output, uh, the output of the program counter, which basically outputs whatever is in the program counter in order for us to uh, load that value into memory or anything, uh, not into memory, sorry, into a register which will use us, which we will use to then access the instruction from memory. Right. So let's just um, fix our brightness here for a bit, so you guys could see better because these LEDs have a really bad glare. Right. <laughs> anyway, um, so basically you saw these uh, labels. Uh, so these the label for these signals, right? So what basically happens is, depending on the instruction we find, uh, the instruction is fetched from RAM. So so depending on the program counter, the program counter is loaded into the the uh, the uh, the memory address register here, right? And then the memory address register fetches the content of RAM and outputs it to to the bus, which is then loaded into the instruction register. So now we have the instruction. So we fetched it from RAM. If you remember when we when you studied, if you did study computer science, you probably studied something like fetch, uh, fetch, decode, execute, store, right? So we already fetched it from RAM, and now we're decoding it, right? So the, the, the instruction goes down here to the instruction register, and the first four bits of any instruction, we'll get to the instructions in a bit, but the first four bits of any instruction are used to decode it, right? So, so basically that's the instruction. The, the instruction is only four bits and the operand for it is four, four bits. So basically we have 16-bit instructions. Um, so yeah, here, uh, here is the, right now we have some instruction. We will see what it is later. Uh, and this instruction is sent from the uh, instruction register down here to the microcode. Uh, the, the, the microcode is on EEPROMs and you could watch Ben Eater's video which explains how you can replace pretty much any combinational logic uh, with an EEPROM. Uh, it's a really cool video and we've used it twice in this computer. We've used it here and we've used it in the output module. Right, just let, give me a second to tie this again because it disconnected probably. Um, yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah, just I will ignore it for now. So yeah, um, after the instruction has been decoded, right? So, so the instruction has passed, has has come, has like reached here, right? And it's it's now uh, outputting whatever uh, its 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 decoded output is to uh, these control lines, which basically tells the the rest of the modules which one will work and which one won't, and which one will be input, which one will be output, right? So these lines would be would be running. So if we reset this computer and start looking at what we're doing. Um, we can start uh, determining what's actually going on. And I hope you can see these down here, but I know they're not visible, but I'll try to say what they are. 
I mean, they're very difficult. This is very difficult to fix. I'll probably try and fix it in post processing or something, but post editing or whatever. But yeah, so so basically, the first step of any instruction is load memory address, right? The load memory address is on, and the out program counter is on. So basically, this will load zero into the memory address. And if we pulse the clock, uh, and we're, we're, just notice that we're currently here in the first micro instruction. So there's an LED that's actually dim over here. I'm pretty sure you can see it. Uh, this one. So if we pulse the clock once, this was actually done. So 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 we actually loaded what whatever was here into here. But since they were both zero, it didn't really show. But we will see now that after we've loaded the address of the instruction we're going to read, we are now... Uh, loading what the value in memory for that instruction, right? So, so um, we have we have address zero. So we're going to read address zero from RAM and see what instruction is there. So currently, the the control signals that are uh, that are uh, enabled down here is load memory, right? Which is correct. We're loading uh, the value in RAM into the data register into the memory the, the memory data register, and we ha we uh, we also have the load instruction register i just have to move this paper a bit because it's harder to read uh yes this is now it's aligned and we have the load instruction uh so, sorry sorry we had we had we the, the first signal wasn't load it was out which makes sense i just got confused between the signals so it's basically outputting what's in memory which is correct it, like i explained it correctly but the signal was wrong uh and then whatever is in memory is loaded into the instruction register so load i is also enabled and program counter count is now enabled because since we fetched the instruction, we're going to fetch the one after it. So if you pulse the clock again, the program counter now has a one, right? Um, and now we're going to execute the third micro instruction of the whatever instruction I found here. We will get into instructions a bit later, right? So it's going to load in the memory address, right? Um, and it will take... Uh, this part of the instruction register, so the operand of the last command, it's going to load it into the instruction re register. Uh, sorry, into the memory address register. So it must have told, like, the, the, this command, whatever it is, it must have told it to load a value from, from memory address hex ff, uh, which basically all ones. So we can actually see this here. So this is the part of the command, the, the first four bits over here, or the last four bits, and the first four bits over here are the address. Uh, this is just guessing. We can we will actually check what this command is later on. Um, so if we if we pulse the clock, this is correct. We're now addressing address hex ff in memory, and it has a value of one. Um, and now um, the the fourth micro instruction of this is telling it to output from memory the value, output it to the bus, right, and load it into the B register. So, okay, so now it, we should see it in the B register, which is all correct. So, so far it's been executing fine. Uh, and now the final uh, part of the, the last instruction uh, is, is, is basically load A. So it's going to load some, the, whatever's on the bus into the A register. And it's telling it to output the ALU output, which is 1. And update the flags register, which is FLD, so flag load. Um, and if we pulse the clock again, this is what happens. Uh, the, the, the flag, the flags register oh, did update, but it's both zeros because there isn't a zero or a carry. Uh, and we got, um, a one into the A register, right? Uh, basically loaded what was in the ALU and now it's going to fetch the next command. So the next fetch is going to be the same as the last one. So it's going to load into the memory address register. What's in the program counter? which should be one now. So there we go, it's, it now has a one and we're on the second uh, execution cycle uh, inside the instruction, right? Okay, um, so now what's basically going to happen is it's going to decode this instruction and when it decoded it, uh, no, sorry, before decoding it, it should move it to the instruction register. So we're now getting the command, so we're now fetching the command from the instruction, from, from memory. So this command, uh, is going to do something. We don't know what it is yet, but we can tell from the control lines. So currently it's just going to load it into the instruction register like last time, which did happen. And now here it is. So the three ones here, right? So 1110, one, one, we have it here, 1110. One, one, okay. 
uh, and now it's decoding it and it's telling the control lines to output whatever's on the A register and load the output register. So this must be the out command because it's telling us output whatever's in the A register and then load it here. So it's, it's outputting what's in the A register. And now if we pulse the clock, we should see a one here, which is correct. Right. And now there's nothing to execute for the final uh, two cycles of this uh, of this instruction. So it's just going to be doing nothing until we get to the next instruction, which is basically at address two and so on. Uh, I think uh, I will now just um, let this execute. Right. Um, so we can see what's going to happen. And it's just going to repeat this all over. So it's now going to be a two because the last instruction, we're not going to get into it now because we'll explain it later, um, is a jump instruction. And a jump instruction just makes it, it's a non-conditional jump, which makes it go back to address zero, right? So let's just take this computer away for a second and let's, you know, I'll turn off the flash and bring back the brightness. I'll just take this away for a second, you know, we'll miss it, but let's just look at this for a moment. Um, so yeah, now we can take a look at these. And what are these? These are the computer instructions which are supported by our computer, right? So the first one is a NOP. It's a no operation, uh, which, uh, which is uh, pretty much, I've, I haven't seen a single computer architecture which doesn't have a NOP so far, but also how many have I seen? So <laughs> yeah, but it's really important because uh, a lot of the time you do want to do some NOPs. Um, load A, it basically you give it an address and it loads whatever uh, is in that uh, memory address into the A register, right? Uh, we also have the add command, uh, or instruction, sorry, which basically adds whatever is in the address in memory to the A register. We have the subtract, which does the same as add except subtraction. We have store A, which stores a value from the A register into memory at, at the specified address. We have load immediate which loads an immediate value, so it doesn't address in memory, you just give it a value here, and then it will load it into the A register. We have an unconditional jump, which basically uh, changes the program counter to the specified address. We have a jump if the carry bit is set, in the carry flag, and the carry in the instructions, uh, sorry, in the uh, flags register, so basically the carry flag, and jump if the zero flag is set. Um, and we have output and halt. So halt just halts execution, it stops the whole entire program, and out uh, outputs the value of the A register to the seven segment display, uh, which is what we saw uh, just a while ago. Uh, so um, I, I want you to excuse my handwriting because it's probably a handwriting of a two year old, but I've written a small program here, right? Let's just keep this in, in view actually. Uh, I've written a small program here, which basically does something. Uh, if you want, you can go ahead and pause the video and try to figure out what it does. Um, it's it's not really hard to understand the assembly language of this computer. Um, so basically what it's doing is it's adding to the A register the value in... Uh, we'd usually initialize the A register with a value of zero before this, but we already know it's going to be zero, um, so it doesn't really matter um, because we're going to reset the PC first. Um, so we're going to add a value, uh, the value stored in address 15, which is the step variable, right? Uh, into uh, l let me just tell you what the program does first before tracing the assembly. So what this program does is I just need to brighten this. Uh, what the program does is it uh, it basically counts from zero to uh, the maximum it can count to, which is two five five in a step. And you give it the step and address fifteen in memory. So you could give it one and it will count in ones. You could give it five and it will count in fives. You could give it twelve and it will count in twelves. Whatever value you put here, it will just keep adding it, right? And when it reaches two five five, so basically it overflows. It will go back down to zero, and then when it reaches zero, it will go back up to 255, and it just does that infinitely, right? Um, so, so we have an add 15 here, uh, which, is, which basically, it doesn't add the value 15, it adds what's in the address 15 in memory. So it's going to add, oh, come on, I want this to be visible. Yes, that's better. Uh, so we want to add the step to uh, the A register. And if that causes an overflow, so or if it, if it causes the carry bit to be set, then jump to the fourth address, right? If not, then output whatever that number is, and then jump back and keep on repeating this, right? So it basically keeps on executing here until the carry bit is set. When the carry bit is set, it starts subtracting. And when it starts subtracting, it checks, has it reached zero yet? And then it jumps back up to 
the first instruction, right? So if it's zero, it goes up here, right? It goes back to the add 15. If it's not, it outputs and then keeps looping here until it reaches zero, right? It's a pretty simple program, uh, but let's go ahead and program it. So, um, but before we program it, we need to this uh, we need to assemble it, right? Uh, we don't. We're not really compiling anything because this isn't, this isn't actual C code or anything. So we're just going to assemble it. And I've already gone ahead and done this uh, because it's going to be tedious to do in the video. But what we basically have is each instruction has a, a, a opcode here, right? And we put this opcode next to the operand that we need. So we're going to add add right here is is zero zero ten zero zero one zero, which is zero zero one zero here the add command instruction sorry and then we have uh, hex ff or 15 and in, in, in binary and then the same with the jump carry uh, 0111 and then the operand for it right so and then it goes on but the only exception is that the out command doesn't require any uh, value or operand so we can just leave these as don't care we don't really care what they are right so let's go ahead and, and program this on our computer So I'll just bring it back in. Yeah, it's, I think it's now in the middle. <laughs> I hope because I don't want to bother anyone with this. But yeah, let's let's program it. So let's bring our piece of paper here and let's reset our computer. Right. So we've reset our computer and we have our program here. And what we're going to do is we're going to put the program, uh, the, the computer in program mode. So currently it's on automatic mode or execution mode, where it's basically just fetching the content of RAM and writing to it on its own using the address registers and all. But we're going to turn that off and go to our manual mode where we can use these dip switches to program memory. So first of all, we're going to go to address zero and add the first instruction. So the first instruction is one, one, one. So four ones and then a zero and then a one then two zeros so that's basically the at 15 so we're going to pulse that and then we have yeah at 15 right it didn't change anything because last time I wrote a program for this it was also doing at 15 um, so we didn't really do anything new uh, and then we're going to go to address one so the instruction register is now at address one right and we have now something here this is supposed to be jump carry four which is right here so we're going to add the instruction in the data register so that's zero zero so we're going to tie these to zero so zero zero one zero yeah that's correct so just please focus yes thank you um so we have zero zero one zero and then three ones right and then we pulse the pc the computer once the clock whatever the, 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 sorry the program button and then we have the output command, the instruction, which is basically 1110. And then we don't care about what these are, but we will just keep them zero for, for whatever sake. I don't care. Uh, and we did a mistake. We forgot to change the address. So I'll have to program this again. Um, yeah, I know you'll probably skip this part of the video anyway. So, <laughs> yeah, so here we go. So it's now 010. Oh, that, this bit is off. 0110. Now we're supposed to go to address 2 and set the out command, the instruction. Why do I keep saying command? I should stop using Linux. Anyway, uh, we go to the third address and it's going to be 0, 1, 1, 0 and then four zeros. So basically jump to 0, which is correct. And then we're going to the third address, the, the fourth, sorry which is supposed to be sub 15. So we're going to four and sub 15 is zero, zero, one, one, and then four ones, right? So zero, zero, one, one, then four ones. And that's correct. Um, then we're going to go to the fifth address and it's jump zero. So jump, so sorry, jump zero and then the address zero. So it's going to be one and then all zeros. So there we go. And then we have address six which is going to be an out command and instruction, sorry. <laughs> uh, I think we should just focus for right here, yep. So now we have the out, the, the, the out instruction and then we have the jump for, so it's going to be zero, one, one, zero, and then zero, one, zero, zero. 
So there, zero, one, one, zero, zero, one, zero, zero. There we go. And then, yeah, we're done. Um, actually, we we forgot something, but um, I hope that you have figured it out by now. Is we haven't programmed the step at address fifteen. Address fifteen currently has a one, which is fine, but this would be a bit slow. So how about we we make it maybe I don't know a five. So let's set it to five. Um, there we go. Set this to five. This to zero. So there we have a five now in the ff address. So now we should get proper execution. Uh, let's just keep this paper here so we can get back to it, right? So I could refer back to it when we need. And yeah, uh, we should now go back to execution mode. And we should, when we pulse the clock, we should find this value in memory. So let's bring back our focus and reduce the brightness for a bit so you guys could see. And now we have uh, the first clock cycle, the first uh, instruction cycle, right? So add 15 we're going to fetch it first from ram so um first we're going to fetch it and there we go we've already fetched it into the instruction register i'm kind of skipping because we already went through this so it's going to be zero zero one zero and then all ones right oops yeah and then we're going to um execute this uh until we find um we're, we're counting in fives remember now so here's five loaded into the b register and then uh, where we added it to the A register, so the first one is executed has executed correctly now, and now we're going to do the conditional jump. So, so this is actually new, and this is the part where I said we'd look at jumps in the next part of the video. So, we're going to fetch the instruction, right? So, we fetched it, and here it is. It's one one one, sorry zero one one one, and then zero one zero zero. So, jump if carry to address four. And then the, the, the third uh, instruction cycle, um, it's not going to do anything because the carry flag is not set. So when it was decoded, it figured out, hey, what am I going to do? I'm going to do nothing. And then it's just going to be all blank here until we go to the next instruction. And the next instruction was fetched, which is out, right? So now if we, if we pulse the clock a couple of times, we will find that, whoops. Oh, actually, I did something wrong. Uh, at address um, 2, I didn't uh, give the out command. I give the halt command, which is why the computer halted now. The halt signal's on. So we can reset it and then go back to the... I mean, excuse me, it's very hard to, to program using these, right? So we're going to address 2, and we're going to set it as 111 and then 0, not 1. Because it, it basically, if we go back to our command sheet, our instruction sheet, uh, I got this bit off by one, which basically meant it would halt, halt instead of output, right? So, um, yeah, we should now program this in and then go back. And we should execute until we see uh, 1110 here. Um, but what is happening now? Did we program it? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's working now. Yeah, I was just confused. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So there we go. It's now loaded. Um, uh, yes, but it loaded one this time into the. Let's take a look. Oh, there's one here. Uh, we accidentally programmed this, so we should now set it to five because we said we'd be counting in fives. <laughs> Yeah, and then we can just reset the PC and then continue execution. It should now load 5 again, yes, and then uh, try to execute the jump, which is not executing. And then the out, command, the out instruction is now here, so the out instruction is here. And it should now just uh, output a 5 here. So now it's loading whatever's in the A address into the output address. It's sorry, in the A register to the output register, and then there we have a 5. And then it's just going to skip the next two instruction cycles because it has nothing to do. Um, just fix the focus for a bit. Yeah. Okay. So so now we have a a non-conditional jump. 
So let's see how that works. So first, uh, like every single instruction fetch, we're going to load into the memory address register what's on the program counter, which is three, which is in fact the address that we're going to execute on right now, execute at or whatever. So now when we address that in memory, we should get a jump zero. A jump zero is going to be um, zero, one, one, zero, and then all zeros, right? So it should now Okay. Yeah, I think we also programmed this bit wrong. You see, this is kind of embarrassing. <laughs> but, yeah. So, um, at 3, we have jump 0. Um, which should be, yeah. We have one bit off. So it should be these two bits only. I think we should probably check that we have all the addresses right, so we don't have to keep going back. Um, so let's go back to address 4. Address 4 has now has a sub 15, which is 0, 0, 1, 0. No, what's going on? We want to go here. Yes, correct. So this is correct. So sub 15 is correct. And then jump 0 is also correct. And then the sixth address has output and then seven has jump four which is also correct and then we have five and address 15. so yeah it should now work let's just hope so there we have a five here now and then we have the uh that was the output so now we should have the jump the, this is this is the unconditional jump so the first cycle we we, 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 we fetched the uh, instruction from RAM and then we, we de decoded it, right? So the first two cycles. And now it's telling it to output whatever is in the instruction register and load it into the program counter. So it's basically, we have here a jump zero. So it's loading this zero right here from this part of the instruction register into the program counter. And we should now see all zeros here, which is correct. This is what happened. So now it's going to go back to execute here. And if we just let it run for a bit, you'll see that it keeps repeating this. And now it's going to be 10 in a bit. Should be. Yeah, there we go. And if we get this mini screwdriver, which is very cute. Um, yeah, it's not focusing on it. But anyway, you should, you should get an idea of the size of it. And we make our clock faster because this is a very small potentiometer. Right? And if we make our clock faster, we should see it counting way faster. And now it's counting uh, a lot faster. Still not fast enough. Your computer is way, way faster than this. Okay, so I had to pause the video for a bit, but I'm back now, and we should just fix the lighting now. Yeah, it's now better. Um, so, so yeah, what, what, what I was saying is that it now it's going faster, and your computer is probably way faster than this. But you can also figure out why I had it slow from the start, because this is insane. This will probably blind you. But yeah, uh, now it's going up to 255, and it's now going back down to zero and then it's basically executing now it's executing in this part of the code right so basically this part so yeah it's not going to focus because i've fixed it but yeah it's executing in this part so it's a sub and then it's executing here and then it was done so it's now going back to 255 and yeah it keeps going so that's pretty much it there's not much uh, else to show. Uh, you can do all sorts of programs, and you can see, by the way, when subtracting the, cali flag, the carry flag here is set. Uh, but actually, I wanted to show you something. Uh, I wanted to show you the moment where the zero flag turns on. So let's just wait until it reaches five and then pause. And then let's see when the ALU is zero. And we should see, because it's now subtracting, so subtracting five from five, so we should see a zero in the ALU right now, right now, I think it's in the next instruction. Oh, actually we missed it, <laughs> we went uh, beyond, okay, so let's just, um, we can show you the carry flag at least, I can show you the carry flag when it's on um, with the addition, so we could stop it maybe 250 this time and try, oh, this is only 200. And maybe take it from there. So yeah, 250. 
And then if we pulse it a few times, we get yes. So this right here is the overflow. So we're adding 255 to 3. But it won't output it because I didn't tell it to. Um, and now, after this, the carry flag should be on when I add these two. Yes, there we go. So the moment it added them, uh, we got the carry flag uh, to be uh, on, right? And now if we were to do a jump carry instruction, it would do it and it would go to four, uh, line four, which is basically the subtraction, right? And now it's subtracting and etc. And the same thing happens with the zero flag. So, so yeah, you can do pretty much anything you want with this computer, but the only limitation is that you have two registers and 16 bytes of RAM. So <laughs> I don't think you'll be able to do a lot. People have done multiplication. Uh, there's a program that does the Fibonacci sequence. There's a lot of couple of cool stuff. Um, but, but yeah, that's it for now. Um, one last thing I want to show you. It's not really related to the computer itself, um, but I mentioned this in my blog post, uh, which I released today as of recording this. Um, let's just turn it off for now. So, um, I, I, I didn't mention this part on the blog post, but I will show you what I did mention on the blog post in a bit. Um, so, out, throughout the build, I ran out of wiring, um, a lot of wiring actually. So, I had to use white wires here and yellow wires here. And down here, I was supposed to use the same wires as the bus. Uh, I was color coding it, but now I can't. Uh, sorry, not the bus, the internal connections here. Uh, but now I can't, so I had to use black, white, and red, <laughs> the only remaining ones, because I didn't use them much at the start. Um, so I think it didn't turn out to look that bad, but it would have looked way better if I had more wire. Uh, but then again, they weren't available in Egypt at the time, so I had to buy them from uh, from outside Egypt. Somebody was able to bring them for me. Uh, so yeah, uh, the final thing, which I did mention on my blog post, is the power. So if we take this out, I know it isn't the most pretty looking thing ever, but it is pretty well isolated. So I made these four pins, right? I soldered them through a couple of wires to these two pins here. And the same thing with the positive part with these two pins here. Oops, I didn't even focus. Um, yes, so, so we have these two pins, these two sets of pins. We can just now take the computer out of the frame just to make things more logical, right? So you stay out and we turn off the flash because it's, yeah, there. So it's these two sets of pins, which are basically four pins for regular ones, which fit into breadboards. And we have the positive side and the, neg the, the, the ground side, right? So the positive side and the ground side. And we also have these couple of wires and these pins. And I connect these to these alligator clips or cro crocodile clips or whatever they're called. Uh, and these connect to this monstrosity, <laughs> which is my bench power supply. And I've actually disconnected, but it still has some power. If we turn it on, it we should now just turn off. Yeah, so this is basically a computer power supply, <laughs> which I turned into a bench power supply. I basically just cut the wires and then connected the 12-volt uh, the ones here, the 5-volt ones here, and the 3.31 volts here. Uh, um, and we have also two USB ports, which totally work, actually. I tried them before. It was a bit of a risk. I was afraid it would blow up something, but it did not. Uh, and I made this, like, some seven years ago or something, and it still actually pretty much works. Um, so, yeah, I use this. It's, an, it's way more than enough to drive this computer because it only drew around 800 amps from, the wall, uh, from, from this um, on idle. I wasn't running anything. But it was drawing 800 amps, and I'm only expecting it to increase a bit, not much. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, and yeah, I hope if you're willing to attempt this project, I hope that you enjoy it. If you're, uh, if you're not, then I hope you enjoyed uh, this series. In both cases, I hope you enjoyed this series. I hope you enjoyed uh, watching the updates. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you enjoyed watching the previous videos and all of that. And I'll see you soon in some personal project that I'll be also sharing. Um, I hope that I have one that I will be sharing. But yeah, see you all. Bye.